Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is, of course, Cameron. It is the game preview. Everton taking on Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park tomorrow afternoon after two home games on the spin last week. A fantastic win against Burnley in the Carabao Cup and, of course, that frustrating draw with Brighton last time out. Everton are back on the road, back on the travels again to face a side that we haven't necessarily had the greatest record against in recent years. However, we probably haven't been this suited to playing away from home for a number of years as well. We are certainly more suited playing away from home than we are at Goodison Park at the moment. Our form away from home is significantly better. I know we've had a couple of good results at Goodison recently. The Bournemouth results, obviously the Burnley results, the Brighton result could have been a fantastic win. But as I said, frustratingly, we ended up conceding that goal in the last sort of five or ten minutes of that game. But away from home, we have been significantly better, significantly, uh, you know, more organised. And, you know, ultimately the performances have been much more impressive on the road than what they have been at Goodison Park this season, obviously coming off the back of wins against West Ham United, wins against Brentford, Aston Villa in the Cup of course, a couple of really, really good results against, you know, decent sides, sides that ultimately have got relatively good home records. Brentford, in fact, have got a, a fantastic home record over the last 12 months and we were able to turn up there, nullify them to practically very little on the day and take advantage of the opportunities that we had. And I suppose the hope going into this one tomorrow is that we can do the exact same. Crystal Palace currently sitting uh, 11th in the Premier League table, which seems like that's where they always are. And, and I don't mean this to be disrespectful to any Crystal Palace fans whatsoever, but it always just seems like Crystal Palace finish between 11th and 13th every single year in the Premier League. Um, but they are sitting 11th at the moment, four wins. Don't get me wrong, I would absolutely love that by, for, for Everton to do that, by the way. I'm not taking the make. I'm not having a go with them. I would love if Everton just finished 11th for three seasons on the bounce. I think it'd be great. Uh, they've got four wins, three draws and four defeats. Of course, Everton sitting 16th with three wins, two draws and six defeats. They currently sit on 15 points. However, they haven't had a home win since early September. You look at their last results. They did win last time out away at Burnley 2-0. Prior to that, they were beaten 2-1 at home by Tottenham. They lost 4-0 away to Newcastle before that. Drew 0-0 with Nottingham Forest. And then if you look at their home fixtures prior to that, a draw 0-0 with Fulham. You have to go all the way back to the 3rd of September to find the last time they won at home, which was a 3-2 win against Wolverhampton Wanderers, certainly at home in, in the Premier League anyway. Um, and that should give this Everton team and these players uh, a, a little bit of confidence going into this tomorrow. Don't get me wrong, I think we should be confident anyway. I think our performances of late have been much, much better than what they had been in the opening couple of months of the season. Even the performances at home, I mean, we've just spoken there about how we are generally much better away from home than what we are at Goodison Park. However, the performances at Goodison Park recently have been much more improved to anything that they were at the beginning of the season. The performance against Brighton, I thought, was 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 very solid. Uh, you know, again, people are going, oh, you only had 20% possession and Brighton had all of the ball. It doesn't matter. If you watch that game and if you watch the entire 90 minutes, you will know that Everton deserved to win that game of football. We nullify Brighton to practically nothing in the game in terms of going forward. The goal that they scored was ultimately a fluky, you know, deflected, you know, shot at the end of the day. And prior to that, we had two big wins against fellow Premier League opposition. So, you know, there's definitely an argument to suggest our home form has improved as well. But away from home, we have been, you know, significantly more impressive. The win at West Ham was a really, really impressive one. The win at Brentford a couple of weeks prior to that, really impressive as well. And taking away the Merseyside derby, and where even in that game, I felt Everton performed relatively well, and, and were definitely in that game battling until, uh, you know, obviously the, the Canate decision and then the, the penalty, which obviously changed the complexion of it completely. But up until that point, we were very much still in that game. We were very much still, you know, competitive in that game. Um other than that sort of last 25 minutes of the Merseyside derby, I think Everton have been pretty faultless away from home recently. And, you know, Selhurst Park isn't, isn't you know, the, the, the happiest place for, for Everton Football Club in recent years. We haven't had the happiest memories of there. But 
hopefully that can all turn around tomorrow and that can all change. I believe Crystal Palace have got a couple of first team players out injured. I know they've struggled with injuries over the last few weeks or so. Players like Elise, I think, is out. James Tompkins out with an injury. Dean Henderson, of course, who is the, the goalkeeper out with an injury. I read a rumour a couple of days ago that Eze might have picked up a problem as well. I'm not quite sure how reliable of information that is, but if that is to be true, then, you know, that is the attack and threat, isn't it? Eze, Elise, you know, the, the, these are two of the 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 best players in, in the Premier League, in my opinion, and two of the standout players in the Premier League. And, and, and definitely, uh, I think it's fair to say the two you know, stars at at Crystal Palace, if you like, certainly in those attacking areas. And without them, I think it's fair to say Palace have struggled recently and Palace have struggled to replace the quality that they bring. Um, You know, usually at home, Palace are really, really solid. There's not many teams that typically can go to Selhurst Park and pick up good results. But due to the injuries that they've had in in recent weeks and months, they've, they've struggled to be able to, you know, pick up the, the, the points that they maybe would typically pick up if everybody was fit. So uh, this is a, an opportunity and definitely presents itself as an opportunity for Everton to turn up there and get a, a, another big, big win. It would be a, a fantastic win tomorrow. And once again, it would relieve even more of the pressure, even though I do think a lot of pressure has been relieved from the manager. <clears throat> and obviously the situation that Everton are in at the moment. But I think a win tomorrow would again further alleviate that pressure and, 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 and give us even more breathing room. They've still got a lot of quality in there, don't get me wrong, they've still got players in there that can hurt you, players like Jordan Ayew, players that like um, Odson Edward, of course, who uh, you know have proven in the Premier League that they can score goals and, and, and that they can cause issues and, and cause problems, but you know there's there's there's, there's definitely a, a hole missing there with players like Elise out injured. Obviously, we don't know uh, whether Eze will or will not be there. If Eze is fit, then, then he's somebody Everton ultimately will have to worry about and, and watch out for because he is a, a, an, an absolutely incredible incredible talent. I think both Eze and Elise are absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic players and I'd love the pair of them to play for Everton Football Club. So, you know, they, they have got dangerous players there, they have got players that we'll have to watch out for and they have got players that we'll have to ultimately be aware of but I think this is a fantastic opportunity for, for Everton to turn up again and get another three points tomorrow. Typically, <clears throat> when we play Crystal Palace away from home, I'm not very confident at all. Uh, I can't remember the last time we turned up at Selhurst Park and I sat there before the game and thought, you know what, I'm confident Everton will get something out of this game. I think Everton will win this game. I think Everton can. And, you know, as I said, that, that it, it's not necessarily a long-standing thing because I've seen Everton win a couple of times at Selhurst Park over the last 15-odd years. But typically in the last four or five years or so, we, we really haven't had a good record there whatsoever. So it would be nice to, to turn that on its head tomorrow and go and get another valuable three points. It will be difficult, of course, because as I said, even with the injuries, because the Palace are generally quite a solid team. And although I've just mentioned that it's been quite a long time since they last won at Selhurst Park, they haven't necessarily lost all of the games in, in which they've played there either. They obviously lost to, to a high-flying Tottenham side who, you know, are, are in a really good period at the moment, but they do with Nottingham Forest, the team that a lot of people would say are in a similar situation to Everton. They do with Fulham, a, a team that are probably in a similar position to Everton as well. So it's not like they're, they're, they're losing every single week at home. They've lost a couple of games at home, but they've been to sides like Tottenham who are doing really well, Arsenal, who obviously are, are, are a fantastic fantastic side as well so uh, it won't be a, a, an easy game by any sense of the imagination I, I don't expect Everton to be able to turn up and walk over Crystal Palace but I do think there is a there is a, a, an argument to suggest that if Everton can perform in the way in which they did against West Ham and by that what I mean is frustrate Palace um, you know make sure that we we, we completely um, nullify their attack and threat and stop them from being, being able to play the way in which they want to play, stop them from being able to get forward, put crosses into the box, use those wingers to maybe get balls into, you know, Edward or Mateta or whoever it'll be, you'll start up front. If we can, you know, if we can do that and stop that from happening and then ultimately create opportunities at the other end for people like Dominic Calvert-Lewin and, and Nick a goal, then I think there's every chance we, we win this game. You know, you, you wouldn't have, have, have thought we'd have gone to Brentford, played the way we did and come away with a point, but as I said, you know, every game we've won <clears throat> away from home this season and certainly the games in which we've won in the last two months or so, we haven't won one where you think we've got away with one there. You know, we, we mightn't have deserved that. We, we were lucky there. You know, Jordan Pickford had to save us a couple of times. You know, we're used to 
in the last three seasons, certainly the last two seasons in which we've fought relegation, we've won some big, big games, whether it be away from home or whether it be at Goldison, where, yes, we've played really, really well and we've won the game and we've deserved to win, but we've also come away from the game at the end of it saying, you know, bloody hell, if Jordan doesn't make those two massive saves, then it's a different story, or if, if, if said player doesn't miss that big opportunity, then it's a different story, whereas I don't think we're having those conversations at the moment. You know, I, I can't particularly remember a moment in the West Ham game where I felt like Everton were under a massive threat. Okay, Jared Bowen had a couple of half chances that he put wide, but I can't remember a big chance where I thought, you know, bloody hell, we've got away with one there. Same for the Brentford game, even Brighton. You know, Lewis Dunk had a free kick, which was comfortably saved. Other than that, what what big opportunities did they really have to, you know, to... to um, to get back in the game, I know they scored the goal, which was ruled out for VAR, but again, that was from a set play, I'm talking about moments that happen, you know, in the game, in in, in, in play moments, I still think set pieces are, are kryptonite at the moment, and it still absolutely terrifies me every time we can see the set piece within 30 yards of the goal, um, but I suppose, like I said, if, if, if we can perform the way in which we have done for the last you know, four or five weeks, certainly away from home, I think there's every chance we come away with a result tomorrow because I think it's really, really difficult for teams to be able to deal with that and for teams to be able to defend against that. Uh, and I think Crystal Palace will be similar to, 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 to Brentford, similar to, to West Ham, not necessarily in terms of the, 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 the results, but I think I don't see why we wouldn't perform in the same way. I don't see why we wouldn't set up in the same way as we did in those games because it worked. It worked away from home, and it's not like we're talking about you know, two sides that are, are near the bottom of the table and, and are, you know, poor teams and teams that uh, haven't got a lot of quality. You know, Brentford are a, a fantastic side. Brentford are a side that at home have had a, a, a fantastic record of, of, of late. You know, I think they only lost a couple of games in the last two years at home. You know, similar with West Ham, obviously not quite as good, but still a solid junior at, at home. So we've beaten teams that, notoriously are quite solid at home and we've done it by playing the way in which you know we, we've played as I said defend them well stopping the opposition teams from creating chances and then ultimately you know being able to bite them on the, on the counter attack when we go up the other end and hopefully it can be much more of the same tomorrow I do think this will be a tighter game because it always tends to be a tighter game against Crystal Palace but um yeah I am I am quietly confident I'm not absolutely confident I'm not as confident as I was last week and and I'm Brighton are a better team than Crystal Palace, so that tells you everything you need to know about uh, the, the confidence I had going into last week. But I am, <clears throat> you know, I am, I am somewhat confident that Everton will be able to come away from this game with um, with three points, and let's hope that 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 is the case because it would be, as I said, an absolutely massive, massive, massive three points, and uh, and and it would almost make up for for the three points that we missed out on last week because of you know as i said a, a fluky sort of last 10 minute goal uh which ultimately was was unavoidable really wasn't it um it as i said i don't expect this to be easy roy hodson has obviously come in over the last 12 months and and really sort of solidified that crystal palace team when patrick vieira had them they were pretty much all over the place they were struggling uh, they didn't really have an identity. They were struggling to perform. They obviously come to Goodison, uh, you know, and were two 0 up and managed to throw that game away in, in in the famous game that we all were there and all were a part of. Um, but you know, I, I expect them to be to be very different under Roy Hodgson because they're a very different outfit, um, and they're a much better team as well. They're, they're you know they're, they're a much more confident side. They seem to know what they're doing. Everything seems to be a lot simpler under Roy Hodgson as well, um, and more understandable. So I, I do expect this to want to be uh, much more difficult. Anyway, let's get into our predicted start and 11. Of course, brought to you by Fan Hub. As always, don't forget to go down in the description, first line of the description, and download Fan Hub. If you use the code THE UVP, you will get on instantly. Go and follow us over there at the Mighty Blues. You can predict your start and 11s. Uh, the more predictions you get right, the more points you get. The points you get, you can exchange for rewards such as pints of beer in certain pubs, uh, such as clothing, uh, stickers, etc., etc. So, Go over there, <clears throat> follow us, pardon me, at the Mighty Blues. We're trying to build as big of a community over there as possible and hopefully trying to do some stuff with Fan Hub surrounding our community in the very near future. So go over and follow us. You can also predict games as well. It's not just predict the starting 11. You can predict games. You can uh, sign in to stadiums to to, 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 to say when you've, you know, you've been to a game, etc., etc. There's loads to do on there. Uh, so go over there and check it out. Anyway... Predicted starting 11. Let's get straight into it. In goal, Jordan Pickford for me. Um, yeah, 
simple. I, I, I do a predicted starting 11 every week, and every week it comes to talking about Jordan Pickford, and I find it difficult to try and find more and more reason as to why Jordan Pickford should be number one. He's the number one. I don't feel like we really need to talk about it much. He's the number one. It is what it is, and that's how it will be probably for the remainder of the time that he's at Everton. Um, Left back then, I am going for... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Vitaly Mikhailenko, once again. Thought he was superb against Brighton. Obviously got the goal, which he, he very much deserved and absolutely made up that he was able to get that moment. But other than that, I thought he was superb. Defensively, I thought he was superb. And, you know, as we said in that Brighton review, if if, if he can get forward more often and he can start being uh, somewhat of, a, of, of an influence at the top end of the pitch as well as defensively, then, you know, I, I, I don't see why he can't go on and be, a you know, a... a pretty much a first name on the team sheet type of player every single week because I th- I think he's been absolutely phenomenal of recent and like I said last week it shocked me to see people saying that he's a weak link and he's not being performing well because I just don't see it. Uh, Centre-backs, no surprise here, I am going with James Tarkowski and uh, Jared Branthwaite, let's switch them over so Jared Branthwaite is on the left. Um, the manager did have his press conference yesterday and he spoke about Jared having a little bit of, of an injury uh, over the last week or so that has maybe kept him out of a couple of days of training, but he did also say that he expects him to be fit for this game. He said he's been back on the grass over the last two days, he'll be training again today and touch wood if there's no reoccurring problems, which hopefully there isn't, he will be fit and available for this game. So there you go, I'm going for Jared Brandbaith and James Tarkowski again. Don't really need to discuss them. Don't really need to speak about them because they are our, our, our start and centre back partnership. And if it if if one of those two isn't in the team and is replaced by somebody else, then I can only think it's because of of an injury or or, or a problem that we don't know about. Right back, I am gonna go with Ashley Young because ultimately, let's be honest with ourselves, we put. Um, Nathan Patterson in this team week in week out on the hope that the manager will pick him on the hope that the manager will give him a goal but does it ever happen no not really Um, we know he trusts uh, Ashley Young we know he probably prefers Ashley Young we know he probably thinks that he's a, a better option at the moment and therefore, when he's fit and when he's available, I fully expect Ashley Young to be in the seventh team. Um, personally, for me, as I said, I would like it, it, it to be um, Patterson because I think he's younger. I think he's got more of a future at the football club, and I think I think he's more likely to build that partnership with Jack Harrison on the right hand side. But like I said, it's 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 more than likely going to be Ashley Young, isn't it? Uh, in the midfield, then I am going to go with Amadou Onana. Returning to the side alongside James Garner and where is he? Abdulai Ducore. It will probably be something of a that formation. I know the Blues, who watches the channel often, has spoken to me and asked me about why I've always got it set up in a 4 3 3 formation. I haven't. The Fan Hub app automatically puts it in a 4 3 3. You can probably change it, but I just haven't found out how to. So I don't think Everton will play this specific formation. I just can't be asked trying to change the formation for the sake of the, the little circles being in different positions. You know which formation we're going to play. I'm just picking the players. Um, Yeah, you might say a bit harsh on Garner Gay, who I thought did well against Brighton. I thought played well. I thought stepped into that Onana role pretty comfortably. Um, Didn't really put a foot wrong. Was never really at fault for anything. But... Ultimately, I think if Amadou Onana is fit, and, and as I said, similar to Brandweight, the manager said, obviously, he missed the last game with a bit of tightness, um, but he's been back on the training pitch, and the hope is that he'll be fit and available for this one. If that is the case, then I, I just don't see why Amadou Onana shouldn't be playing. Um, you know, he's been one of our better performances of late. He's obviously a, a massive asset to the side as well, and whilst Garner had a good game last week, and you might say, oh, well, you can't stop him after having a good game, ultimately, Onana, had he been fit, would have been in the team. So, uh, Onana's in there for me. The other two, similarly, I thought Garner had a decent game last week, worked hard, put himself about, good challenges, you know, good interceptions at times, and Decore wasn't as impactful, but we all know Abdullah Decore is is much, much more impactful away from home than what he is at Goodison Park, so I fully expect him to play in this one. Uh, and then the front three, up front, I'm going for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. On the left, I'm going for Dwight McNeil. And on the right, I'm going for Jack Harrison. I, I I don't think this will change. I'll be honest, I don't think this will change. Some people might say, oh, maybe you'll give Dan Schumann a go. Maybe you'll give Beto a go. Uh, but I, I just can't see it changing. I can't. I think it will be the same front three. Um, 
I wasn't massively impressed with either of the wingers against Brighton. I certainly wasn't impressed with Jack Harrison, but um, I, I just don't think he will. I don't think he'll take him out. I, I don't think he'll take him out. I think he'll keep him in. And uh, yeah, maybe you give Beto a go to throw a, a you know a, a, a spanner in the works a little bit. So Palace are maybe a little bit unsure, but I think it's more than likely going to be Dom, isn't it? Let's be honest. So there you go. That is my predicted starting 11 for the game tomorrow. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As I said, don't forget to go and follow us on Fan Hub over there. You can see it in the corner, the Mighty Blues. Everybody that follows us, we will be following straight back. Predict your fives as well. Five fixes this week. The more you get right, the more points you get. As I said, you can exchange your points for prizes. Uh, I'll be doing them a little bit later on. You can also do various other things on the app. As you can see, submit your lineups, uh, see what everybody else's lineup is submitted see where they are in terms of points on leaderboards you can input your games you've been to this season you can do an awful lot so get over there to fan up go and check it out give us a follow over there as well that would be greatly appreciated um and yeah get your predicted starting 11s in so there you go that is the preview as i said this will be a difficult game i fully expect this will be this to be a difficult game palace at a, a decent side and at an especially solid side at home and even though they've had some injuries recently and they might not necessarily have won certain games that they expected to win they've still you know performed well and, and, and held out and it, it's been difficult for, for teams to to um to ultimately to to get past them so it'll be interesting let's wait and see what happens uh, if you have enjoyed this please do leave a like it does only take a second if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe we'll be back with the instant match reaction and the player ratings tomorrow so look out for those uh, but until then big big thank you all for watching really really do appreciate it and we'll see you after